In today's park spotlight, we are going on an incredibly unique medieval theme park located in a tropical environment packed full of ruins. Kinda gives me Bilgewater vibes mixed with the Serpent Isles from League of Legends, which is funny because we we're just talking about that in the last episode, Ionia. So I'm actually very excited for this one. So stay tuned and let's check it out. Hey yo, my Planet Coaster friends, Johnny Five Alive here, and welcome back to another episode of Park Spotlight Contest Edition. Today we're looking at Kitadel, created by Nori Power, and here they say Kitadel is a medieval theme park located in a tropical environment. Just before the contest, I bought the adventure pack. I had a lot of fun building with those pieces for the first time. This was also the first time I actually tried some interior and enclosed areas so i would love to get some feedback on that before this built my interior never looked so good so i never actually tried it i hope you like it as much as i liked making it boom there it is uh, i'm a big fan of what you did to the medieval stuff in this as we'll take a closer look the um it has this almost rustic piratey charm <laughs> it's got that kind of uh, mishmash of almost like shanty town vibes. And like I was saying, it reminds me of a little bit of a bilge water from League of Legends mixed with the Serpent Isles where all the temples are. And I was like, I really want to see someone do something like this in the last submission, which we saw Ionia. And uh, this is pretty close. This is pretty close. So if anyone was accepting the challenge that I proposed in the previous episode, I think some of the art assets in this are pretty close to which what which you would see in a bilge water and i think there's a lot of cool things to take inspiration from nonetheless this is looking to be one of the most unique medieval theme parks of this contest and i'm really liking what you did with the art style and how the coaster goes in around these buildings everything is looking very intricate and uh, i'm just excited to dive right on into it so why don't we do just that all right ladies and gentlemen hope you're all doing fantastic today here we are at the kitadel I don't know if I'm pronouncing that right, but uh, we get a little bit of lag, and that is because of the temple pieces here. These these temple pieces are TMTK, and they are loaded up on the polygons, so it's a little bit heavier, uh, even though the park is quite small. That's quite okay, though. We have a, a, a tolerable frame right here, and like I said, everything is looking really unique. This integration of temple pieces with um, kind of shantytown medieval vibes. Like, you put a lot of effort into these building pieces. All of it's, like, really custom looking. And uh, lots of undulation and pops. I actually um, was tasked to kitbash and build medieval towns for the Unreal Engine 5. So when I see buildings like this with all the panels on the side and the white stucco stuff in the middle there, the undulating rooftops, it brings back a lot of memories when I actually designed art assets for the Unreal Engine. And I know how complicated those can be to kind of mash them all together and create some, you know, unique looking structures. So what you did here is uh, quite a step up from what you normally see in medieval builds. And I'm really liking it. Look at how tight this queue is, but also very detailed. You are speaking on your interiors and how you've never really done them before. And they never really turned out looking that good. But as you can see here, we are walking through an interior queue. Uh, and it is actually quite complex. Now we're back outside again. That area is roped off. You got windows, boards, pathways, railings. It's all looking really nice. And look at the views that we come out to. Like I said, some of these vistas remind me of the Serpent Dials. It's really crazy how uh, these came lined up back to back like this. And here's a Kraken. Um, Ilawi from League of Legends is the kind of Kraken priestess. He uses tentacles to spite her enemies. Um, one of my favorite characters, personally so weird how this ended up working out like this wow so this is our hammer swing contraption big ass cue with tons of detail all for this hammer swing but not just for the hammer swing we got a bit of a top hat stall for the coaster going over it as well that's a great double usage right there um two for one getting more bang for your buck let's see um 
if we can ride this thing and get a decent perspective, uh, probably go with seat view. I think I want to switch the row that's facing. I always have trouble with these things. I think that's the one I'm looking for. Whoa. Look at that park. A lot of really cool intricate details here. And uh, here's a look at it from kind of a bird's eye view. I really like that. It's super fun. All right, I, uh, I'm just gonna drop down to a random point and continue exploring. Uh, this is where we got onto the queue, perfect. So we could just continue on from here. Yeah, the pathwork and integration is feeling really immersive. I love this. And that's the exit where I should have gotten off. Look at that tree swing. That's fun. Uh, I think I'm going to stick to the right here. Head to this back half of the park, and then we can loop around and come back. Ooh. See, this is what I'm talking about. This doesn't really feel medieval to me. It actually gives me New World vibes of some of their shanty pirate towns because of all the tropical stuff around there and just the way the buildings are kind of like shaped like ships. You know, like the captain's quarters ships on, on ships. It's, it's looking very unique. I mean, uh, I guess that's still technically classified as medieval but it's giving me more shanty pirate theme vibes than anything else, which I like. It's not a critique at all. It's a compliment. Yeah, this is a uh, superb interiors. I have no um, critiques for you there. I think you've done an excellent job elevating your style to include wow i would have almost missed that to include uh, interiors really nicely done oh is this a boomerang i feel like i saw like a a piece of a boomerang at some point hmm Possibly not. Could be a water cascade, actually. We're going really deep. Oh. It is a boomerang. Cool. All right. It's called Holt. And there's a look at all the stats if you'd like to see them there. We're going to ride in the, the front seat, I think. Actually, maybe pop-up's not too bad. Less filialing, but we got the heads in the way. Actually, let's just avoid all of that and do track. All right, we've, we've seen very, very few boomerangs in this competition so far. And I do want to say that this is the one to beat. I really, really love how that was so well integrated. We had to walk down deeper, deeper, deeper 
and then we came out and went around the edge of the lake there and got a beautiful shot at the top of the boomerang and we never really went like high and i like that we kind of navigated from the depths upward to ground level and we come out to see more insane integration between the coasters and the Monte Leone here. That's looking superb. I feel like this is really well set for a nighttime park experience as well. Indeed, it's looking nice. Maybe we'll walk around for a few minutes here at night. Oh, wow. Okay, right into another attraction. This actually might be for the Monte Leone. Yeah, but I still want to check out these interiors since you put so much effort into them. That's awesome. Really well done. Oh, look at the shot of the street here. Woo! Yeah, I, I actually feel like I'm playing New World a little bit as well. The New World was really big on doing a lot of ruins and shantytown pirate stuff mixed in with medieval classic villages. Uh, it, it's got a mix of a little bit of League of Legends and um, New World for me, personally. That's the vibes I'm getting. And I, as of recently, a month or two ago, playing New World, it's uh, bringing back some of those vibes for sure. And I like that because what you're doing here is you're creating something that separates you from Planet Coaster. When you look at a park and you go, oh, that's a Planet Coaster park. Or when you look at this, you go, hey, that's something different that we haven't seen before. And we see so many people tackle Medieval. And I, I feel like um, this definitely sets itself apart. I feel like this is an exit to a ride because you're normally good at labeling your cues. So it's probably the exit for this. And I, and I do like that element of depth that you're putting in to um, your rides, making us go down. That's a lot of elevation and complexity. Whoa. We're getting hits of lag, which is causing my camera to speed up and slow down at times. A lot of these temple pieces. If you guys do use these temple pieces, just keep in, keep that in mind if you're going for like a larger park. Um, these pieces will hold you back. So if you're really thinking of doing something big and grandioso with this, um, you're, you're going to have to make a smaller park. Just, just so you know. Uh, but these temple pieces can really elevate and create unique experiences. You're just going to have to make smaller experiences. And that's why using them here in a mini park contest is really quite acceptable. We go all the way down for the Gears of Fear. I, I, I like the um, attention to detail on your flat rides so far. They are some of the best integrated and captivating flat rides. As well as the previous park that we just looked at. I feel like you both are prying here for uh, the 2022 best of the year so far. I mean, every single park that we've featured so far in 2022 uh, have been absolute bangers. Really well done. We're setting the new year off with uh, high expectations. And I'm loving it. All right, we're going to do some backtracking and see what else we're missing because I know we're missing a coaster or two. Starflight. You got to really look at the buildings closely. This probably is a nighttime one because of all these star panels. It's called Starflight. Um, yeah, you got to look at these buildings closely because you got these cues just kind of wedged into the side there where normally they would just be facades. I like it. Again, huge, huge praise for me on this park. <laughs> Again, I'm getting... Uh, Lowey has a um, weapon that looks like this, and it shoots the tentacles out. It's like a little blowfish weapon as one of her skins. <laughs> I'm going to have to go back and finish Ruined King now. I was really loving that game. Big recommendation for me is the uh, League of Legends Ruined King. It's a turn-based RPG, not a MOBA. It's a different spin-off from <laughs> Riot Games uh, creating a League of Legends story. And it's only $39 Canadian, so probably $29 for Americans, $29 for Europe. Um, Well-priced, and you'll get 
at least 50 to 100 hours out of it. And if you like turn-based RPGs, it's based off of um, Battle Chasers Night War, which is um, you know just a top-tier, superb RPG combat system. Beautiful art, stores, art styles, voice acted, great backstories. Couldn't ask for more. Only problem with the Ruin King for me, I put it on the very, very hardest difficulty. I think it was called Impossible, and I am just obliterating it like no tomorrow. It's too easy, but I tend to do that with RPGs. <laughs> okay, no, we just came from there. Let's try to find somewhere new. I really love how these coasters are just diving through the buildings like this. I think we came out of there for the boomerang. There it is. Yeah, great boomerang. Little seating area up top there. People are coming out of here. I have a feeling that would be an exit. And here we go. This probably is our main attraction coaster, I want to say. I mean, uh, one thing that you do with your interiors is you made them very tight and narrow and claustrophobic. But I don't know if that's a knock or a critique. I think it feels a little bit immersive as well. So I, I personally don't mind it here at all. And it kind of uh, gets you away from having to put too much wall decorations because you wouldn't be able to sneak by. And it just makes it feel a little bit more detailed. It's a less is more situation. Okay, this is uh, really intricate. Look at this. And now we're going up again. What is happening to us? Where are we going? Oh, there's the hammer swing. That, that was one thing I really love with, you know, certain people's theme parks is having that layer of complexity where you see like a little balcony like this from the other side and people are walking up it. And everywhere you look, it almost looks like uh, the, the city itself is kind of bustling. There's people going in and out of buildings when there are actually queues. It's a great way to create traffic throughout your park. Um, here's the look at the, the, the Fortair. There's uh, the stats, the green across the board. We'll do both We'll do both day and night. Might as well do seat view. Actually, maybe a pop-up. Mm, no, seat.
Wow. Much prefer that at uh, daytime for sure. I'm really loving the, uh, again, the, the integration between the city here and the coaster. You had a few areas that I would give some minor critiques to. Like, you did really good with all this shrubbery and temple combinations. There were a few areas that uh, they felt a little bit barren. I don't know if I could find a good example here, but like here, you know, it's like floating and little unfinished looking and you can catch a glimpse of that going through as fast as you're going. And a great way to just cover that up or avoid that, just stuff weeds and bushes and shrubs and overgrown crap and a few rocks around like you did everywhere else. You know, just follow what you are doing right um, in the areas that feel a little bit empty, like here, right? It all looks natural here and, and here as well. Do what you did here in some of those lower areas um, and, th and then it's perfect to me. Uh, but other than that, it's really well done. I'm really loving everything about this. So that was this coaster. Let's see what we have back here. Oh, look at that. We got a whirly rig. That would be the exit, right? Oh, there's a look at it there. Not much to see here. It's a whirly rig. Oh, there's a water cascade. Okay, so when we were walking through that tunnel and I saw that and I said, maybe it's a water cascade, I actually wasn't wrong. There is also a water cascade. I saw the boomerang from the outside and then going through the queue to the boomerang, I saw what I thought was a water cascade. So big surprise here. We get an extra coaster, water ride packed in. So what, you had a boomerang, a main coaster, a water coaster, that would be three coasters, plus you did a bunch of flat rides that were really well integrated. Looks like another nighttime area. Yeah, hitting all the check boxes for sure. I don't know if I just messed that queue up or not. I'm getting confused in here. Ooh. Looking cool. And there it is. I have a feeling this is a bit of a dark ride coaster, so we'll uh, check it out at night, I guess. There's a look at all the results. Uh, we'll do the little pop-up view so that um, the boat's not really in our way.
Wow, freaking wait. I was talking so much about this giving me pirate shanty vibes, and there we go. We get a bit of a pirate dark ride. I love that. All right, let's switch it back to day. I have a feeling we've now finally hit all of the rides and attractions and been to every part of the park, but we might as well do a fly around just to double check. Looks like you can actually walk this way as well. I like that. Yeah, this is really, really great. I love everything about this. Wait, is there? Oh, that was for the boomerang, gotcha. Interestingly enough, while this is just incredibly detailed, it does leave you wanting a little bit more, which you could have done. So the rules for the competition were that you didn't have to fill the whole 60 by 60, but we kind of suggested that you spread out among the 60 by 60. So that, that could have meant like terraforming a little bit around the outside doing a few lakes and different things. I think maybe you could have um, spread this out a little bit more around the outside and then left it open a little bit more on the inside, done some of this kind of stuff maybe in the middle and use that space a little bit better. Um, we're cutting off an entire, I mean, an entire portion that was the size of last year's contest. Uh, and this being not much bigger than last year's contest to be honest, which to me, it doesn't really matter. This, this is not getting disqualified or anything like that. It was an awesome park, but it was so awesome that it would have been really great to see you do all the way back here. We said you can do three to five main attractions. You had uh, three roller coasters. You could have snuck in another dark ride, water ride, or two more coasters if you so choose, or a transport ride, like a boat ride taking you around. Um, you could have done so much more with this space, and with what you've done so far, the kind of um, composition of everything, the shantiness, the art style, it's all so, so, so incredible that if you would have continued that along over to here with two extra rides, I would have a hard time saying that this would not get top three overall. As of right now, it still has a pretty good chance of getting top three because it's so charming. The art style is so over the top. There's so many incredibly well done things about this. And for me, it's one of my personal favorite kind of pirate themes, pirate medieval mashups, as it is reminding me of that Bilgewater and um, Serpent Isle mixture that uh, I was recently talking about. And I love everything about that. It, it's undeniably a really, really good creation with potential to place top five overall in this bracket. Uh, had you built it all the way out to here, it would have been pretty unstoppable in my opinion. So a bit of a shame that you didn't get it quite to the edge and quite fill up that space. Um, but we're, you know, I'm quite okay with that. You hit everything that was required. You got your skin flat rides, you got your shops, you got your coasters, you really can't complain. So really good job here from Nori Power. What did you guys think? Fire away down in the comments below and that is gonna do it for me in today's episode. Thank you all so much for watching. I hope you have a fantastic day and I'll see you in the next one. Bye now.